This is a reading uh, to try to determine if Scott Peterson actually murdered Lacey per Peterson. Now, um, what I'm getting from the cards is that Scott is a sociopath, if not a psychopath. Um, he's a master manipulator, a master liar. Um, he is motivated by money and by sex. Now, Um, what I'm getting is that, uh, and, and he also has self-esteem, uh, self-esteem, self-respect, um, self-confidence issues with himself, that he has low self-esteem, okay? He doesn't love himself, and he has extreme control issues. Now, when he um, met uh, Lacey, what I what I'm getting is that there were some romantic feelings there for her, but more than anything, it there was sexual chemistry, um, sexual attraction, and the sex was really good, and they um, um, uh, I don't know he enjoyed being with her. Um, now, what I'm getting is that she was not willing to stay in the relationship if there wasn't going to be a serious commitment, okay? So she had to really do some convincing on her, on her part to uh, get him to agree to marrying her. Now he had a hard time keeping an open mind about that because um, he know he knows himself well enough to know that like it might not work out but he didn't want to lose her because it was probably the most exciting sexual relationship that he had had uh, up to that point in his life so um, he went along with it just, uh, I guess, like, believing that he would be able to control her and, and that, you know, I guess in his mind, he, be he believed that being in a marriage, um, would only heighten the, uh, sexual aspect, uh, to the relationship. So, he agrees to marry her. I think that he probably did um, let her know at some point before or maybe after they got married that he he wasn't so interested in having children, but um, she also did some convincing about that and he ultimately agreed to have children. Um, all in the same thought that like he would be able to control anything that came his way. Um, now, what I think happened, what led to the murder, is he got married and it changed his relationship in a way that I don't think he, he thought it would. Um, I think that she started to withhold sex, started to withhold romantic feelings from him whenever they would like get into an argument or um, a disagreement, and that was her power, right, is um, withholding. And I think once, once she had gotten, so that was disappointing for him, and I think when she would do that, he would step out, he, he would look for that sex elsewhere. And that was just strictly cheating. Um, but what I think started to happen um, was basically when after, when she got pregnant, what I am getting is that she tried to sit, play it off in, in a way and say, um, like, 
I'm not comfortable having sex while I'm pregnant, but the the wait will be worth it. So she kind of almost immediately puts sort of a a blockage on romantic uh, feelings, romantic uh, actions, uh, being saying like there's going to be no sex for uh, you know at least nine months, if not more. And I think that was just totally unacceptable to him. But he didn't, I don't feel like he let her know that. I think he, like, said, okay, honey, whatever you want, right? But he immediately thought, I, I'm, I'm going to find, find it elsewhere, okay? And so when, when she started to do that, when she started to, you know, withhold and he started to step out of the relationship um, and introduce, you know, a third party to the relationship. Um, I think he thought it, w it was a lot of work, a lot of work to um, keep up the facade. Um, he had to lie to her a lot about where he was, what he was doing. He had to keep track of it. Um, and same thing for Amber Fry, like he had to keep the illusion going for her. Um, he had to defend himself quite often. I feel like, I feel like Lacey might have had inklings that he was cheating. And, um, so he had to work really hard to, um, keep up the facade. Now, he was doing it okay. Like, he, he wasn't, um, really faltering. He was, because he is a, a master at it. Um, but... I think he, I think he was growing weary of, growing tired of having to, like, lie, defend for himself, um, and, and also lie to people that they were close to. He had to lie that he was happy, that they were happy in the relationship, that everything was all good, and, um, and I think that a lot of the times, uh, you know, that, it was, it was growing harder and harder for him to keep it up and I also think that you know he he also wanted to concentrate more on work and making money and he wasn't really getting that opportunity to do that so I think it that was annoying for him um I mean he would I mean he would just leave he would just go do his own thing whenever he wanted it's not like he really felt the need to ask her for permission or anything like that, but, um, but I think that, uh, he really wanted to, uh, he really wanted to end it all. He didn't, he didn't want to do this anymore. Um, be, and with him, you know, be, with him basing a lot of his relationship around sex and not getting, the sex anymore. It it completely diminished um, his feelings for her. He didn't love her anymore. Um, he, he definitely didn't want to be with her anymore. Um, and so um, what I get is that he was wrestling with the idea of murder. Um, which sounds horrible, but, uh, it's what I see. What I see is that he was contemplating either divorce or murder. Um, he, now, I think, uh, well, he definitely portrayed and he definitely portrayed to Amber, and we, I mean, we already know this, because Amber, you know, told everybody, but, um, you know, he definitely portrayed to Amber that, like, he had already broken up with her, because the, the love your, the chemistry in the release your ex, um, 
cards are, are right next to each other, meaning that in order to get Amber in bed to get to get the sex, uh, he he had to portray himself as single, but also he used um, this sort of uh, um, like woe is me, like oh I I had a horrible ex, you know like uh, storyline, so she would also feel bad for him, okay. Which is just another manipulation, another manipulator tactic. Um, another way to control Amber. Uh, now, I think he, when he was thinking about divorce, there was two things on his mind, okay? Number one, I mean, he didn't, he didn't love Lacey anymore. And this type of person, the way that he is, like, when he doesn't love somebody anymore, like, or have any feelings for them, like, he doesn't want to be attached to them forever. Like, he just wants to move on. He just wants to, like, go and move on to the next girl, right? So having a child with somebody when you're in that state is really hard on that person. They're not, they're not... They don't want to be attached to, I don't feel like he wanted to be attached to her forever like that. Um, and I think that he worried also about um, custody battles, um, having to share and work together, like, meaning the child. Um, because I don't think he felt like they they would have um, been able to do that. Um, and I think for him, I think he was worried about money. About having to pay her alimony. Having to pay child support. Uh, so these things weighed very heavily on him. And I think he was seriously leaning towards murder over divorce because of those reasons. Um, now, what I'm, what I do get though, is that the actual murder was, was not fully planned, okay? So, what I, what I get is that he contemplated it, he was thinking about doing it, but the day of the murder, I'm getting that there probably was some sort of fight, okay? And um, it could have been because of a discovery of the affair or a revealing of the affair, okay? Um... You know, and maybe him voicing his um, displeasure in the relationship, um, him him not being happy, him wanting to get out of it. Um, I I feel very strongly that there was some sort of reveal uh, in that regard to Lacey, or or Lacey found out in some way about the affair. Or she maybe even had just had an inkling and confronted him about it. Um, and it was the actual murder was in the heat of the moment. Okay, so whatever this reveal was, it resulted in a fight that got physical. And he took it that far. So... He was angry. He had all these feelings built up over, you know, at least eight months, but probably longer, okay? And he wanted his freedom. He wanted to be with Amber. He just wanted out. And he let it go. He, he, it had to have been some sort of 
fight and a, and a murder out of passion. Okay, so um, you just overtaken with the emotions. And what I do see is that after he did it, he had regret. He was not happy with what he had done. He wasn't happy with his decision in the moment. Um, he was he was extremely um, worried. Uh, uh, just he he knew he fucked up basically, and um, he had to then cover it up. You know he had to. Find some way that he could get out of it. And he tried everything he could. Uh, but, you know, ultimately we know he, he didn't get away with it. Um, he, he was caught. But, um, you know, he, he, did, he did as best he could um, with, like, trying to portray that they were happy and that... Um, that he didn't do it, and that, uh, but it's all here in the cards. It, it, there was, they were not in a good place. They were not happy, and, um, and I think he went the wrong route because he, in his mind, he thought that, um, because, and it's because he had regret and was worried about being caught that um, his nervousness took over and he went cold. He went stoic. He went um, emotionless. And that was the wrong way to go. But he couldn't help it because if he had if he had tried to go the other route emotional it, it it would have come off as fake it would have come off as acting he wouldn't have been able to pull it off because of the um because of the guilt if he had let himself feel the emotions he wouldn't have made it through. So this is why I think he he's surprised that he that he got caught, because, like, it's almost like in his mind he looks at it as like, well. It was like an accident. So I wouldn't really have done this. Like, it, you know, if, um, if, like, I hadn't been so angry, if I hadn't, um, if she hadn't, like, put all these restrictions on me and, you know, like, pushed me to this point. So he, like, ha he's, like, rationalized it away and, what he's not realizing is that, like, it doesn't matter what the reason is. You still did it. So, um, that's why he feels totally comfortable, uh, like, saying to people that he didn't do it. Uh, telling his parents, his family that he didn't do it. Um, because, like, he doesn't, he doesn't really truly feel that, like, he was totally at fault. Like, he put some blame on Lacey for it. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's an interesting type of guilt because it's not really guilt for, uh, it, it's not guilt like I, um, It's not guilt like I miss her. Um, 
it's it's just like guilt like oh man why did I do that like I I should I should have stopped myself you know but like I just couldn't um so it's not it's not emotional guilt it's like guilt about not being able to control himself and that's what he would always pride himself on is is the control that he has and that's why like you know he went he went the wrong way and he went totally stoic and uh emotionless because that's all he knows is to control to to always be in control and when he married Lacey he wasn't in control anymore. Lacey had taken over and um, he didn't like it. And that's why he liked Amber because Amber was um, the way that Lacey was most likely in the beginning of their relationship. So um, like the submissive one. The one who just like believes anything he says, goes along with whatever he says, does whatever he asks, you know. So um, that's why he was gravitating towards Amber. That's why you hear on all those phone calls and stuff like how sexual it, it all was and, um, you know, how he has no problem like talking to uh, Amber and... Um, telling lies to her and all this stuff in the middle of the search for Lacey, the, the candlelight vigil for Lacey, you know, the trial, you know, like all those things. Like it's, it's because he was able to control in his mind. He thought I'm able to control Amber. So that's what people like this do. They find weak people. They go after weak people. And so what he didn't anticipate is that when he married Lacey, she was a weak person for him. When they were together, when she convinces him to marry her, there was a power flip. Because now Lacey had all the power because she's the wife. She can say whether or not she wants to have sex. She's the one who, you know, uh, lays the law down about where is he, what's he doing, where is he going, who's he talking to. She's the one that um, that can withhold sex or give sex. And I would say most importantly she now is the one that has the power with the money. Um, you know, she if if they were to divorce, she would she would get the alimony, she would get the child support. Um, she would probably get full custody of the, of the child, you know. So it's it was too much for him. He was he lost way too much control in the relationship and he didn't want to be in it anymore and he didn't want to give those things up but I will say though it was premeditated in a in a different type of way though because the only way it was premeditated was that he had thought about it the actual day of the murder it was passion I think that if he if he had given himself more time, um, taken a break from the relationship, um, you know, like any some any thing like that, maybe talk to his family about what was happening. He wouldn't have done it. It would have just been a passing thought, and he would have just like had to swallow his pride and just divorce. But he internalized it all and he went with a very selfish route, selfish thinking, and in the heat of the moment, 
he took back control. So that's my reading. Um, I'm so sorry for Lacey's, you know, it, it's, it's a horrible situation and, um, you know, but they, they definitely have the right person in jail. So thanks for listening.